This is a part of a series of videos where me and Prof Omar Math do several solutions to the Putnam problem from 2018, number A6. And so in this video, I am on his channel. And so you've probably seen a video of him on my channel and some of us on our own channel. So I'll link all those in the descriptions. So if you haven't subscribed to his channel, please subscribe. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please also subscribe. Okay, let's get into the problem. So we wanna suppose that A, B, C, and D are in the Euclidean plane, and none of them are, no three of them are collinear, and we have this rule. So A, B squared, A, C squared, A, D squared, B, C squared, B, D squared, C, D squared are all rational numbers. In other words, the square of any line segment that you can make out of these four points is a rational number. Then our goal is to show that the area of the triangle ABC divided by the area of triangle ABD is also a rational number. So we're gonna use a trigonometric approach to this problem in this video. So my hint for you guys to try um, before we look at a solution is just to remember a bunch of your trig identities and that'll be helpful. Okay, so maybe give this problem a go using trigonometry and we'll come back with a solution. Okay, so hopefully you dusted off all your trig identities and made some headway with this problem using that approach. So now we're gonna go ahead and look at a solution. So I first want to write the area of a triangle in terms of the side lengths of two of the sides and the angle. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a picture so we can get an idea of what I'm talking about. So let's say we've got points P, Q, and R here, and then we have an angle theta, which is angle QPR. So now what I wanna do is drop a perpendicular line from Q down to the line segment PR. So maybe I'll draw that like this, and I'll call that H. And so we know that the area of this triangle will be one half base times height, where we take the base to be the length of this line segment PR but we can use trigonometry in order to find the height in terms of PQ and this angle theta, because notice we have a right triangle with um, altitude H and with hypotenuse PQ in this case. So notice that tells us that we have sine of theta equals, so that's gonna be opposite over hypotenuse, so that's H over PQ, but that very quickly tells us that H is equal to PQ times sine theta. Fantastic. But that tells us that we have the area of this triangle PQR is really equal to PR times PQ times sine theta with a half out front. So it's one half base times height, but we just derived the height in terms of this hypotenuse length of the smaller triangle that we constructed and this angle right here. So this is gonna be uh, pretty useful to work with. So now what I wanna do is draw a picture of our situation and see what this quotient of areas is in terms of our setup. So I'm gonna maybe put the point A right here and then the point B right here C right here and D right here. Although you can really put them anywhere as long as no three are collinear and you'll get like an equivalent setup. Okay, so now let's draw the two triangles that we need. So we have triangle ABC here and then triangle ABD here. So using this argument that we had above, we can find the area of triangle ABC and the area of triangle ABD in terms of really any of these angles but the one that will be helpful is this angle right here on ABC, which I'll call alpha, and this angle right here on ABD, which we'll call beta. And really, the important thing about this is that alpha and beta are like right next to each other, so we could also consider um, a triangle with angle alpha plus beta. That might be something useful it will do in the future. Okay, good. So now we can write the area of triangle A, B, C divided by the area of triangle A, B, D. So the numerator there is going to be one half, and then we have A, B times A, C. So A, B times A, C times sine alpha. 
and then the denominator will be half AB times AD times sine beta. So here we have one half AB times AD and then sine beta. So notice some stuff cancels, the halves cancel, and then the length of line segment AB also cancels. And that leaves us with AC sine alpha over AD sine beta. So our goal for this problem is to show that the quotient of these areas is in the rational numbers, but we have shown that that is equivalent to showing that this quotient of these side lengths, AC and AD, and these angles sine alpha and sine beta is a rational number. So this is our new goal right here. Good. So now maybe I'll clean up the board, I'll bring this new goal to the top, and then we'll keep going. Okay, so let's see where we were. We had our setup here, which was triangle ABC with an angle alpha here, and triangle ABD with an angle beta here. And we determined that the quotient of these areas being a rational number was equivalent to this quotient being a rational number. So we've got AC sine alpha over AD sine beta. Now we're ready to move forward and we wanna look at what we are given. We are given the fact that the square of all of these line segments, lengths I should say, are rational numbers. So now we wanna think how can we express something in terms of alpha and beta in terms of the squares of the lengths of the triangle. And if you think about it for a little bit, you know the Pythagorean theorem would allow you to do something like that if you had a right angle, but we probably don't have a right angle, so you might wanna think about a generalization of the Pythagorean theorem, which would be like the law of cosines. And that's exactly what we'll use. So I'll let you guys review what the law of cosines exactly is, but we can use the law of cosines three different times. First on this angle alpha, second on this angle beta, and then finally on the angle alpha plus beta, and that will give us some nice equations and will allow us to show some things are rational numbers. So let's notice that the law of cosines on the angle alpha will give us two AB times AC times cos alpha equals AB squared plus AC squared minus BC squared. Great, but we know each of those is a rational number, so that means they're a combination like that is a rational number. Now we're gonna do the same kind of thing for beta and alpha plus beta. So here we have two AB times AD cos beta equals, so that's gonna be AB squared plus AD squared minus BD squared. But again, we know that all of those are rational numbers, so that combination is a rational number. And then finally, two A C times A D, this is for this larger angle right here, and the corresponding triangle uh, C A D, so I haven't drawn the third um, leg of this triangle because it'd get kind of messy, but you know, that C D there. Okay, so we have two A C times A D times cos alpha plus beta, so that's gonna be equal to A C squared plus AD squared minus CD squared. And again, we know that's a rational number because of what we're given. Okay, fantastic. Now what we wanna do here is notice that we can square each of these equations. And by squaring each of these equations, we'll gain an AB squared, an AC squared, another AB squared, an AD squared, an AC squared, and an AD squared. We know all of those are rational numbers, but that'll tell us that cosine squared of alpha is irrational. Uh, cosine beta squared is also rational, and cosine alpha plus beta squared is also rational. So maybe let's write that down. So by squaring these equations, we get the following. Cos squared alpha, cos squared beta, and cos squared alpha plus beta are all rational numbers. Great. 
but notice we want something in terms of sines, not cosines, but luckily we've got the Pythagorean identity for trig functions. And so let's maybe note that. So using the fact that sine squared theta equals one minus cos squared theta, and that's for any theta, we can get sine squared evaluated all of those angles is also a rational number. So let's write that down. So now we have sine squared alpha, sine squared beta, and then sine squared alpha plus beta. These all three are rational numbers, which is good news because our goal up there is in terms of sines, not cosines. Okay, good. So now what I wanna do is bring this up maybe, and then we'll keep going. So far, we've reduced our problem to showing that AC times sine alpha over AD times sine beta is a rational number where alpha and beta are defined by this picture right here. And we've also gathered the following facts, and those are sine squared of alpha, sine squared of beta, and sine squared of alpha plus beta are all rational numbers. And then furthermore, this product of side lengths and cosines of angles are also rational numbers. So twice AB AC cos alpha, twice AB AD cos beta, twice AC times AD cos alpha plus beta. Okay, fantastic. Now what we want to do is use the fact that we've got a cosine alpha plus beta over here, and we also have a sum angle formula for cosine that we can use to break that apart into things that look a little bit like that. Not exactly, but a little bit. Okay, so in other words, I want to take twice AC times AD times cos alpha plus beta, and recall that cosine of alpha plus beta can be writ written as cos alpha cos beta minus sine alpha sine beta. Great, so that's the sum angle formula for cosine. So that's gonna give us two AC times AD times cos alpha cos beta, and then minus two AC times a D sine alpha sine beta. Okay, fantastic. Now what I wanna do is maybe call these things, um, give these things names. So let's maybe call this thing star. And now let's work with star. And notice that we can write star in the following way. So we can write star as two A B times A C times cos alpha. Great, and then we're gonna multiply that by 2AB times AD times cos beta. But we've introduced some more stuff that isn't part of star. In fact, we've introduced an AB squared and an extra two. So we can say that is divided by 2AB squared. And so notice everything here cancels down to exactly what star is. But this is actually very helpful because we know that this guy right here is a rational number. We know this guy right here is a rational number. And then we know that the denominator is also a rational number. So what that tells us is that this star term is a rational number. But the left-hand side of this equation is also a rational number. That's something that we gathered on the last board. So what that tells us is that this term right here, the one remaining term, must be a rational number as well. Great, which means if I divide it by two, it's also a rational number. So in other words, I have AC times AD times sine of alpha times sine of beta is rational. Okay, great. And now we're actually essentially done. We just need to use this fact right here, which we just gained. And then we'll also use uh, this fact right here, that sine squared of beta is a rational number. And then finally, one that's given over here, the fact that AD squared is a rational number. And we can actually rewrite our goal expression in terms of all of these things which are known to be rational numbers. So let's maybe write it like this. So observe that 
So let's take our goal expression. So that's AC sine alpha over AD sine beta. So recall that that was exactly equal to the ratio of these uh, areas of triangles. So that's going to be equal to AC times AD times sine of alpha times sine of beta. So notice I kind of built the numerator up a little bit by multiplying by AD sine beta, but that gave me this thing that's in this purple box. We know that's a rational number. And then if I build up the numerator, I also have to build up the denominator, but that's gonna give me AD squared sine squared beta. Okay, but like I said, all of these purple boxes and underlines all over the board show us that this numerator is rational and this denominator is rational, which makes this whole thing rational. And so we've shown our goal, which means we finished the problem. And that's a good place to stop.